On the poll for today's Farm Stop 160 here at Road America for Park Elite Series would be Dave Hetzel in number 67 car, Rio Akuzari would be in second place, Kevin Daly, Riley Knight, uh, of course the poll setter last week, Ramsey Cockiner, Scott Wheeler, Mariano Zavallo, last week's winner at most sport, you got Zach Denman, Danica Holofield, Dan Francisini, uh, Desert Star Motorsports car finally getting a good start in the series, apparently, as we continue to go through the field. Tristan Christoph will make his FARC Elite Series debut, uh, Bradley Carlisle going for a few more points, Kenny George uh, the third, the current points leader, uh, you've got uh, Daniel Leclider, uh, Lavazarov in row 16, Anthony Griffith qualifying a bit lower than where I think he would have liked, and of course Monica Rock taking the last spot in the field as now we look at the D&Q list. So we see Keegan Mallory, John Burr, Kira Smith, George Hawkins, Derek Dudding, Giselle Perez said the first wave of cars to have gone home and then they were joined by Troy Peterson, Tom Brayton, Kyla Spatial, Dale Clout and Truman Ellison so no real surprises there in the uh, last half particularly. As now we move on to the race here at Road America. As mentioned before David Hetzel will lead him down to the green flag Rio Akazaru in second place here. As you see, some cars already looking three wide there. Trek Tower getting Ramsey Cockerman to be exact there. We've got one car thinking about making a four wide dive there, but uh, thinks better of it. So we've got a battle for the lead into the first turn. Looks like the outside line might prevail here, as you see Ryo Akazaru on the outside trying to get around Hetzel and will clear him before turn two. So uh, there we go. Ryo Akazaru into the lead. Dave Hetzel will slot back into second and will now have to uh, hold off a charge from Riley Knight in the nine car. So. Uh, of course, Riley Knight, the last uh, week's pole sitter at most sports. Here we go into Station 5. There's uh, all multiple cars getting into each other. Christoph's around. Tristan Christoph going off. We've got Kevin Monroe with damage. Oh, this is a mess. Oh, wow. We've got the uh, 46 car. Chuck Johnson up on two wheels. We had a couple more there as well. We'll have to have another look at that one, I think. But, uh, well, I don't think we have another camera angle of that one, unfortunately. But we had multiple cars going into the air there, including Chuck Johnson. Anyway, the restart would... Uh, would see Rio Akazaro leading, no pit stops under that yellow flag period as we see Akazaro now trying to hold off Ramsey Cockiner and uh, it looks like that is Mariana Zavala in the 62 car so Zavala will take it second place, he's going to go straight for the lead out of that move here we go, Zavala's going to get it, absolutely a powerful move there by Mariana Zavala sweeps around both Ramsey Cockiner and the 60 and the uh, and the 78 car rather in one move and that's going to see the uh, Mario Zavala take the lead as we go down into Station 5 again. Oh, they apparently still haven't learned as Kevin Monroe piles into Zach Denman there. And the uh, 18 car goes around Jim Kidd, so uh, uh, apparently they haven't learned, learned in Station 5 that you have to use the brakes there as uh, Zach Denman the victim that time uh, after getting plowed by Kevin Monroe, the former series champion. Of course, uh, Monroe won his first race in his debut at Daytona in 2001, so. Uh, as here is Dan Francis Jr. in the Lacey Sportswear car as he drives off there. Uh, it looks like uh, Todd Lacey might actually be in that car after all. Actually, no, uh, I take that back. That car's going too fast for that. Um, but uh, Dan Francis Jr. having a decent start to the race apart from that off-track excursion there as uh, so he drops back a little bit as uh, you see Monroe into the pits with his damage as we're focusing on Daniel Lecklider as right in front of him. It would be... Uh, I think it's Gio Arias and Tristan Kristoff battling there, so uh, it looks like Kristoff is going to lose position. That's actually Dave Hetzel, uh, my apologies, 67 car. As we see here is Zach Denman. Oh wow, he just uh, bumps the back of Bradley Carlisle there. We've had one car go off into the sand there. As uh, now, oh, he's trying to get around Bradley Carlisle there. I don't think Carlisle appreciated getting the. Uh, uh, slammed into there in station 5 but Carlisle trying to hold him off now as here is Kevin Monroe driving a uh, CRL modified car of course uh, Monroe had that front end damage and have just decided to take the whole thing off so uh, Monroe now driving a car with no hood or front end uh, at least the cooling will be efficient on that car so here we see Danica Hollerfield into station 5 Kelly Kenny Brillin just taps the back of the 25 and that's enough to set it around and into the uh, sand trap so that's going to uh, have Danica Hollifield Beach there and she would need a tow out of the uh, out of the uh, sand trap there as here is uh, Dan Francis uh, Jr. again he gained back to position on track tagger and has just lost it again uh, by driving too hard into the sand trap again so uh, apparently Dan Francis uh, Jr. hasn't learned not that the uh, sand isn't really uh, 
isn't really a drivable surface here unless you really want to try, I guess. Anyway, Rio uh, Akazaru is. Uh, oh, he's going to break down here. Oh no, the 78 car is going to have problems here and is coming to a crawl and will stop and bring out the caution. Unfortunate for Akazaru as he was pretty fast today. And here is Zach Webster. You see, Webster was uh, driving into the cross. Uh, practicing his uh, rally cross. So here we see Riley Knight into the lead of the race in the number 9 uh, Motor Assault racing car there. As uh, Knight trying to hold off a charge from several of the cars there. I see uh, Billy Ray Smith Thompson driving out the 91 car there. Uh, Akazaru who got a tow back into the pit lane uh, pretty quickly. He's only one lap down so uh, he must have got that car refired actually if he's only managed to lose one lap and uh, get that car repaired. Uh, quick work by that 78 crew there, great job by them. As we see Riley Knight holding her lead into Station 5, where of course we're going to see a couple of cars get spun around it. As I predicted, there goes Tristan Kristoff, who actually makes a decent save there. Stanley Parsons also goes around, but Kristoff held on to that one pretty well. Didn't lose too many positions, I don't think, so uh, the number 69 car doing well there to save that one. As here we see... The 18 car Jim Kidd racing with Kevin Monroe. Oh, and Monroe's off and into the tire wall hard. Goes both of them. Oh, that is a big crash, particularly for Monroe, who hit the end of that pit wall. As we've got another view here. Oh, my goodness. That was a big hit for Monroe indeed there. And uh, Jim Kidd kind of slides off into it. But that will bring out the caution. As here we see Riley Knight comes into the pits. Uh, many of the uh, front running cars do come into the pits this time around. Uh, Smart move for pitch strategy is here. We see in the lead, Zach Webster would be in the lead of the event. You see uh, Ryo Akazaru is out in front, but he is not the leader of this event. Uh, he is one lap down, of course, and um, here we see the 41 car now trying to uh, hold his lead here. His car's fan out 3-4 wide at the back there, and uh, looks like they're going to sell it down a little bit. And Zach Webster's managed to keep that car clean so far. I don't think he's... Uh, been in any Station 5 messes, speaking of, would you want in a minute as we have had every restart or every lap really. As here we see, here's Bradley Carlisle getting punted by Kelly Splicing and around he goes. So, uh, oh we got more trouble in front, Todd Stater by the looks of it. And the 66 car has, uh, has had a uh, moment there. And now it uh, looks like, uh, yep, yeah, Bradley Carlisle will lose all the positions. Of course he needs as many points as he can get. Um, as he is trying to uh, trying to get up towards the front, as Trek Targa is well off the pace here. He's got something wrong with his car, but oh, he's driving off. It might be a tire issue actually, if he can't turn it through the carousel uh, all that well. But um, you see here, uh, Trek Targa now trying to loop that car back to the pit lane. Uh, if he does decide to pit, is here is Mariana Zavala. As uh, Zavala driving way wide there in turn one. Trying to hold on to that car, he's really driving it, trying to catch up to Zach Webster for the lead of the event. Kevin Daly, his teammate, is in third place. And as you see, Zavala, who of course won at Most Sport last week, trying to catch Zach Webster for the lead and eventually would do so as uh, Rio Akazaru gets uh, punted out wide. Of course, he is uh, down one lap and uh, trying to get himself back into the race. Of course, he's got the pace for it in the 78 car. But uh, Mariana Zavala. Trying to catch the 41 car, that's where the uh, real battle lies. There's the 62 car trying to get himself into the lead of the race and get himself two in a row. Uh, get himself into the Farkoff uh, for sure. As you see, oh, there goes the 51 car. Scott Wheeler goes around. As uh, we see uh, Scott Wheeler now into the gravel trap and he is going to be beached in that car there. As we see here, the 19 car. Ramsey Kakada punts around Tristan Kristoff. That's the second time Kristoff's gone around. And uh, he will, uh, looks like he'll get that car going without actually losing too many positions. But uh, the 19 car, oh, Karmic Retribution there. The 19 car will come to a stop there. It looks like he's, yeah, he's trying to, uh, he's going to stop right in the middle of the track. That's going to bring out the caution. As here we see Danica Hollerfield. Oh, spins it around here in Station 5 again. We'll drive it into the gravel trap. And I think she's going to get through that one okay. As here is Dave Hetzel leading on the restart. Petzl has Stanley Parsons right behind him as Parsons, I think, has a look for the lead of the event. A lot of Parsons, of course, uh, in car number 427, trying to go, oh, he's going to turn Hetzel, and Hetzel's going to go around from the lead and into the wall. 
Hopefully everyone avoids Hetzel here. Yeah, it looks like he's safe, but Hetzel made up his ground back as we hit halfway in the, in the race, and he's going to go right around and, well, to the back again. As here is Dan Francis Jr. Oh, my goodness. What was he trying there? He's utterly missed the corner. And into the tyre walls goes the 83 car. Uh, troubles for Dan Francis Jr. Again, are we sure Todd Lacey isn't in that car? Anyway, Mariano Zavala would lead the race on the restart. As you see, cars fanning out again at the back, trying to make up as many positions as they can before turn one. As the, I believe Rio Akazaru is still a lap down. Danica Hollerfield, uh, a few laps down, I believe, as well. As uh, we see Zavala trying to get an advantage. As uh, Akazaru's go for his uh, lead lap back, he's going to get it, I think, here. Yes, he is. And... Um, it looks like the 62 car will... Oh, no, he's going to hold it off here. And um, uh, Mariano Zavala is going to hold the lead here into Station 5. Of course, he would have still had the lead. Oh, my goodness. Danica Hollerfield's punted him around. Danica Hollerfield, I don't think, has got this corner right once so far uh, this race. And uh, has just punted Mariano Zavala, the race leader, off. So that's the second time in uh, two cautions. That uh, we've seen the leader get punted around and uh, absolutely disgraceful driving there by uh, Danica Hollerfield as she's missed that corner. It must have been the third or fourth time she's missed that corner this race. You would have thought she'd get the hint to actually hit the, the brakes for once. As you see, we've got a battle for the lead between Zach Denman, uh, Rebel Denman rather, and uh, it looks like Trek Targa is Targa. Of course, he had some problems with this car. They've been fixed well and truly, I'd say, as he's just stormed into the lead around. Uh, Rebel Denman, the 101 car, so uh, looks like Trek Tauga will be leading this race now in the 74 car, and he is well and truly going places because he's pulled well away. So here we see Kevin Daly in the 64 car, he's going to dive it into the pits here, as uh, he's going to be the first one in after the, straight after the caution, one lap after the caution, he's got a few cars following him actually, so uh, apparently some cars not fancying their chances on making it on one stop from here on out. As here we see Trek Tauger now well and truly in the lead. Re Rebel Denman was actually one of the cars that went into the pit lane that last time around, so he doesn't really have any competition. As now Trek Tauger uh, looking like he is going to lead. It doesn't look like he's going to be 74 car pitting this time by. Uh, this time around, it looks like he's going to stay out for a few laps. As uh, we got an onboard here, an onboard shot. Oh, we got a couple of cars off at the Carousel Tire Wall. Looks like one of them's Dan Lecklider. I couldn't quite make out who the other one was. I think it was actually, I think it was Mariana Zavala. So, uh, oh, it looks like uh, Tristan Kristoff's going places around the outside there. But, uh, oh, risky move into the kink there. But, um, looks like Daniel Lecklider won't really put up too much of a charge with Tristan, Tristan Kristoff, as you see. Here is the field going by. It looks like the 74 car has uh, got a big lead here. That's uh, Gio Arias in second place. Kristoff's up to third. Uh, Looks like he's just got around uh, the 19 car, Ramsey Cockner. Uh We've got a couple of more cars there. As, uh, we had one CRL modified running well there. I think it was Kelly Splicen. Uh, Jason Bates running inside the top 10, having a decent run. Uh, Scott Wheeler and Dan Francis Jr. having decent runs, but I think they might both be laps down. So we've got a, a first wad of cars there. Zavala part of that one there. As here is Trek Tauger. Now he comes into the pits from the lead. Uh, he has opened up a pretty nice lead, obviously, as we've seen in the last shot. But, um, Trek Targa now into the pits. Tristan Kristoff stays out for another one as he's just passed Gio Arias and has taken the lead of the event, effectively. But Gio Arias having another look in the uh, 69 car. And now the 86. Uh, we'll back off from that one as here we see Tristan Kristoff's opened up a bit of a lead, but now will sacrifice that lead in uh, order to uh, make sure he makes it to the end of the race on fuel and tyres as he takes his pit stop. I think Gio Arias won't be too far behind in the 86 car. As now this will have the lead to Kevin Daly who of course we see him pit early on. Maybe he uh, has just outsmarted everyone as now he is in the lead of the event in the number 64 car. Uh, the M&J Racing E. Cola car as Kevin Daly now into station 5. We'll slide it off! Oh my goodness, he had this race in the bag, I should imagine, if he didn't have to pit, but uh, now Kevin Daly has slid it well wide, and there goes Trek Targa to the lead. So maybe he would have been caught after all, as Trek Targa now has an absolutely massive lead here 
in the number 74 car. Trektaga, of course, has never won a Fark Elite Series event. He's made a few starts as early as uh, 2011, I, I, uh, I think. But um, Trektaga now has his best shot of winning a... Uh, of winning a Fark Elite Series event, if you can just see this one out, as Tristan Christoph weighs back in second, has been fast and has been setting faster lap times than Trek Tauger. Christoph is currently in his Fark Elite Series debut here, and he's running second at the moment. Of course, he has won multiple race wins in the uh, part series, uh, the part racing series, when it was known as the APRS series for his own team, but uh. Obviously has taken a step back as here we see Dan Francis see oh, what was he thinking? Dan Francis Jr. Uh pretty sure Todd Lacey's in that car. I mean, I don't think Dan Francis Jr. would be that stupid and multiple times here. Stanley Parsons Oh, that might be some revenge! Of course we've seen Stanley Parsons get into the one car uh, into into the 67 car in turn one and Hetzel show no signs of slowing down there. I think that was a little bit of revenge there by Dave Hetzel. So uh, I'm not sure what the park officials are going to think of that one. As here we see Trek Tag with only a few laps to go now before his first ever Fark Elite Series victory. As we see now coming down into Canada Corner for the last few times. We've seen uh, Tristan Christoph in the view there, but he's not really applying any pressure. As here comes Trek Tauger, and here he goes off into the sand trap. Absolutely unbelievable. Trek Tauger has thrown this one away and he will be beached in Canada Corner. Unbelievable, but now Tristan Christoph is taken the lead and he has no one really near him. So uh, Tristan Christoph had pulled away from Gio Arias, who was in um, who was in third place, of course. Now in second place after Trek Tauger went spearing off into the sand trap. But uh, unbelievable, there is here we do see Gio Arias in second place on the white flag lap, I believe, as uh, Gio Arias in the second place really showing no signs of uh, catching Tristan Christoph as Christoph is about half the track ahead as Tristan Christoph who is making his Fark Elite Series debut today will come around the final turn of course he's only a part-time driver so I'm not sure making the Fark off was on his mind but it must be now as Tristan Christoph wins the Fark Stop 160 here at Road America Absolutely fantastic driving his debut in the number 69 car as now Tristan Christoph will roll that car into victory lane Mariano Zavala managed to get by Gio Arias for the second position at the end. Jason Bates and Kelly Splicen round out the top five. Kevin Daly, Billy Ray Smith Thompson, Rebel Denman, Zach Webster and Billy Bob Childers would round out the top ten as now we look at 11 through 20th. Kenny Brillin uh, got 11th, Trek Tauga 12th, I'm sure he would have liked uh, the race win but uh, unfortunately threw it off there and uh, I don't think that's a move he's going to forget for a while. Bradley Carlisle, Rio Akazara did get his uh, lead lap finish. Todd State, a uh, last car on lead lap. Hetzel, uh, Ramsey Cockner, Scott Wheeler, Danica Hollifield, and Dan Lekhider round out for top 20 as now we look at the points. As Todd State takes the points lead away from Kenny George III as neither of them had particularly great races today. Bob Steffens and Stanley Parsons. Kevin Monroe rounds out the top five. Bradley Carlisle in sixth. Lev Azarov, Dan Leclider, Billy Ray Smith Thompson and Ashley Tucker who of course wasn't in the car this weekend, the uh, number 64 car, still 10th in points. Next time out the Fark Elite Series will be at the historic Darlington Raceway as, we, as the Fark Elite Series gets ready to take on the Prolapse 100 at Darlington.